Okay, so we had discussed uh, in details about how the floating point addition works in the previous uh, part of the lecture. So I'll summarize it once again and then we'll do an example followed by the circuit design of that. So as I said, the first basic step is to compare the exponent. That's why we have a checking exponent uh, block right on the top followed by adding the significance. So once you have accomplished the process of matching the exponent numbers by shifting the smaller number to the right then the next step is we will add the significance together okay that is to perform the actual addition process and then in the next step which is the third most important step which is to normalize the output of the addition that you've got so normalize the sum normalizing the sum can again be accomplished by either shifting to the right and incrementing the exponent or shifting to the left and decrementing the exponent shifting right and left is that the shifting of the fraction number that we are talking about and finally once the overflow underflow condition is passed then we will round the significant to the appropriate number of bits okay so this is the step that is actually rounding the significant output based on the number of bits that are assumed to be taken or specified and then finally we'll again do a normalization just to just to see if in case it is normalized or not if it is normalized we don't need to if it is not then we'll do the normalization again right so in this what we'll do we'll take an example of two numbers which is 9.999 base 10 into 10 to the power 1 and 1.610 base 10 into 10 to the power minus 1 we will assume that the storage of four decimal digits of the significant is allowed that means the storage hardware can store maximum four decimal digits that's what is assumed in this example so going with the first step what was it is to compare the exponent or uh, check the exponent so we will align the decimal point of the number that has a smaller exponent so 1.610 base 10 into 10 to the power minus 1 is the number that we need that we need to match to the larger exponent number so 1.610 base 10 times 10 to the power minus 1 becomes 0 0.1610 base 10 into 10 to the power 0 which is also equals to 0 0.01610 base 10 into 10 to the power plus 1 so as we are shifting the fraction to the right gradually we see that the exponent is also becoming larger and larger and finally we will stop at the last number which is 0 0.016 base 10 into 10 to the power 1 because right now the exponent in this step is matching with the exponent of the larger number right so the larger number is 9.999 base 10 into 10 to the power 1 so since the exponent of both the numbers match so therefore we will stop the uh, exponent matching process and the shifting process of the smaller exponent in the step 2 as per the algorithm we will add the significance so 9.999 base 10 is added with 0 0.016 base 10 and it becomes 10.015 base 10 which again if you represent in uh, scientific notation will become 10.015 base 10 into 10 to the power 1 right now since this is not normalized so we need to do the normalization so by normalization we will convert it into a normalized scientific notation which is therefore given as 10.015 base 10 into 10 to the power 1 which is equals to 1.0015 that means if you are shifting the number the entire number to the right then we are again incrementing the exponent so uh, 1.0015 base 10 into 10 to the power 2 is a new number after doing the normalization this is a normalized number because because it doesn't have any leading zero to the left of the decimal point right as per the definition of normalized scientific notation in the last step since the significant can only be four digit long so therefore we need to perform rounding so rounding in the rounding what do we do since it's 1.0015 so we will try to round it by adding plus 1 to the digit to the left of 5 because the number is not between 0 and 4 if the number is between 0 and 4 to the right of the decimal then we will truncate since it is not between 0 and 4 
and greater than 4 so therefore we will add plus 1 to that so 1.0015 becomes 1.002 into 10 to the power 2 so that is the number that we finally have after performing the rounding there is one more step after that that is to check if it again needs further normalization or not but in this case we do not need fortunately to normalize it further because it is already a normalized number right 1.002 is again a normalized number so is anyways normalized so we don't need to do any more action here so that is the final output of this floating point addition so you see through an example that we have how we have been able to perform floating point addition and using the algorithm of floating point addition we can do this now let us see how to do the same thing using floating point adder hardware so this is the IEEE 754 standard floating point adder that we have now let us imagine there are two 32 bit input numbers that comprises of three fields sine exponent and fraction and again on the right we have sine exponent and fraction in both we marked it as a red box indicating the 32 bit inputs in the first step what we do we will pass the exponent value from the first input and the second input into a small ALU and then inside the small ALU we are actually performing the process of comparing the exponent based on the exponent difference we will know which is a smaller exponent and which is a larger exponent we will send that particular signal to the controller and the controller will indicate to the switch one which is a multiplexer to pass through the exponent value of the larger exponent right and based on the comparison of the exponent numbers we will know that which of the numbers has smaller exponent and which of the number has a larger exponent so again from that the fraction will be sent from both the places okay so we have switch 2 and switch 3 in both the multiplexers we are sending the fraction from here and the fraction from here similarly again this fraction is going to switch 3 and this fraction is also going to switch 3 and depending on the the number which has a smaller exponent that number will then be subjected to shift right so in this example we have assumed that this is the number which has a smaller exponent so the so the number of that is shifted to the right until the value of the exponent matches with the exponent of the larger number as per the algorithm so once we have done the shifting we have now got the number uh, which has the same exponent uh, uh, you know format as the exponent of the larger number so that is now added with the so that fraction is now added with the fraction of the larger number from here so here the fraction of the larger is chosen between smaller and larger here the fraction of the smaller is chosen between smaller and larger once the two fractions are uh, passed through then we will send it to the central ALU which is a big ALU which has a lot of other operations also uh, integrated as part of the feature then what we will do we will add this so this is actually playing the role of adding the significance that you have okay and shifting smaller number to the right is done here this is that step from the algorithm and adding the significant is done here and from here from this switch one multiplexer we have already passed the exponent of the larger number okay so that exponent is anyways now part of is already as an input into that switch four and from here the output of the fraction is also passed and uh, what we'll do now is for now let us just ignore switch 4 and switch 5 i'll talk about that later we will just assume that these two numbers the exponent and the fraction both have now arrived at this input the first input of this arrow and this first input of this uh, switch 4 and switch 5 and then again we will do the normalization now in this normalization either we will shift it to the left or the right and we will also either increment the exponent or decrement the exponent okay so if we shift it to the right we will increment the exponent if we, sh if we need to shift it to the left then we will decrement the exponent so that will depend on whether we need to do the normalization or not and how we do the normalization once the normalization is done is complete then it is passed to the rounding hardware now this rounding hardware is responsible for rounding it 
to your desired decimal number of places so we have assumed for example in the last example it were four decimal places so then this rounding hardware will round it to that particular four number of decimal places if the number to the right of it is uh, is not between 0 and 4 then we will add it and if it is between 0 and 4 then we will truncate it as I explained in the last slide. So once the rounding is done then again this is fed back into this switch 5 and switch 4. So rounding of the, uh, the, the uh, output of the complete number after we finish the normalization we will again need to pass it through because that number may again need to be normalized as I said once you perform finishing the normalization and rounding is over then the rounded number may again need to be normalized there are some specific special cases where that is also possible so therefore this switch is again taking another accepting another input from that output here switch 4 and switch 5 right and this ALU output as you see is also now is also fed to the controller here because the controller has three inputs one from the exponent difference and other two from the the big ALU because it tells it tells whether we need to shift and whether we need to increment or decrement okay if that is a necessary step or not so that's why the controller based on this output will send respective signals so in this entire floating point adder that you see this is called a floating point coprocessor or floating point coprocessor of a floating point adder so this is placed along with MIPS so this entire feature is not part of MIPS processor but it is a coprocessor that is co-located with the MIPS processor except the centralized control unit that you see here which is responsible for enabling disabling and timing synchronization of all the switches that you see and the shifting units and the increment decrement units and the rounding units and the ALU okay uh, the rest of it is all called the data path only this is called the controller so this is called the controller and the remaining besides the controller everything is called the data path okay so the small ALU the exponent comparison is performed just to summarize by subtracting the exponents uh, we have a control which is called centralized controller we have a switch one which is responsible for selecting between two exponent values switch two selecting between significance of two numbers switch three is also doing the same selecting between significant of two numbers because through one we want the smaller significant to come and through the other we want the larger significant to come or the uh, smaller fraction and the larger fraction to come the right uh, shift right block shifts the smaller significant to the right thereby increasing the exponent the big ALU is actually responsible for performing the addition of the significance switch 4 selects between the between the exponents that is the direct input that you have versus the one that you have after rounding and switch 5 is also similar it selects between significance the one which you have a directly as an ALU output versus the one after rounding the rounding hardware is responsible for rounding the output generated generated because you want to store it into a 32 bit register right at the end and increment decrement is responsible for adjusting the exponent value in case you do need to do the normalization so basically you have these major 11 blocks so that is pretty much uh, the concepts of IEEE 754 standard floating point adder we also call this as floating point coprocessor okay so thank you so much in the next lecture we will focus more on MIPS performance analysis and the other types of data path units that are responsible for performing uh, MIPS instructions thank you